Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Kyle Kassler, and I'm a program manager at the Stevens Initiative. On behalf of the Stevens Initiative team, I would like to say welcome and thank you for your interest in this year's survey of the virtual exchange field. This year's survey is an important effort to document globally the numbers and types of virtual exchanges connecting individuals with their peers in countries around the world. We encourage implementers to participate in this effort to document this growing area of international education. At the Stevens Initiative, we know from experience that often practitioners are passionate about the power of virtual exchange and are also curious about how much activity is occurring globally and how other virtual exchange programs might differ from their own or from those they are familiar with. Our goal this year and in each of the previous iterations has been that the survey effort will yield critical insights about virtual exchange programs and the evolution and growth of the field. We hope that practitioners will learn more about the other exchanges and that administrators and decision makers will understand the power of virtual exchange and join the global movement demonstrated in your responses. We can only share these insights with your help and responding to the survey is vital and is a great first step. I'm going to also ask you to please use the tools and information we will share to, with your networks uh, to encourage other virtual exchange providers and implementers to respond to the survey as well. A toolkit is on the survey landing page at the Stevens Initiative webpage. Please use those resources to get the word out and reach out to us if you need help sharing the survey effort. I'm going to turn this presentation over to the research team, Rajika Mandari and Melkin Ramos. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, recording and webinar. And my thanks to Kyle for setting us up with this wonderful introduction. I'm Rajika Bhandari, and I'm the principal of Rajika Bhandari Advisors, an international education research and strategy firm. And I've had the pleasure of partnering with the Stevens Initiative on the survey for the third year in a row. And I'm also delighted to be joined by my colleague, Melkin Ramos, who serves as a research assistant for the survey, who will also be working on the survey for the third year in a row. And we're both delighted to be working alongside you as you choose to take the survey and make your way through it. And uh, we really hope that you will consider responding to the survey. You will reach out to us if you have questions. And please also share the survey with your other colleagues in the field of virtual exchange who you think may not have heard of it and should perhaps be responding to it. As Kyle shared, um, the, the findings that we report on are only as good as uh, the responses that we get. So my ask of you is that you please consider taking the survey, that you reach out to us to clarify any questions that you have, and that you encourage other colleagues in the field to also uh, to participate to also participate in this effort. So with that note of welcome, I'm going to turn it over to Melkin, who's going to walk us through a lot of the nuts and bolts of actually completing the survey. Melkin, over to you. Thank you, Rajika and Kyle, for that great introduction. Um, we're going to move on to the next slide to get things started. On this slide, we'll be covering a few key terms you should be familiar with prior to beginning the survey. To begin, we will start with the definition of virtual exchange. Prior to beginning the survey, please refer to the Stevens Initiative's virtual exchange typology, which you can access on the Stevens Initiative website and will be linked within the survey. Virtual exchange, or VE, is a method that uses technology to connect people for education and exchange, yet can be inclusive of many program types. Common elements of VE for the purposes of the survey include the following. They are international, connecting participants in different countries in order to help them gain global competencies, among other knowledge, skills, and abilities. They are often facilitated by prepared, responsible adults who are often, but not always, educators. The next terms are program versus provider. Virtual exchange programs are exchanges that are distinct from each other if one of the following features was unique to that program and different from others. These include participant population, learning content, countries connected, duration, or program activity types. An organization might offer one, two, or many virtual exchange programs. 
Examples of virtual exchange programs include collaborative online interactive learning, or COIL, language learning exchanges, hackathons, among others. You should report on virtual exchange programs even if they are part of a blended activity that includes physical mobility and exchanges. A virtual exchange provider includes organizations, informal organizations, networks, and primary, secondary, and higher education institutions that implement virtual exchange programming. To conclude this section, we'll cover the differences between a participant and a facilitator. A participant is an individual who completed enough planned activities to achieve the intended experiences and outputs of the program, whereas a facilitator is a person who plays a present role in enabling constructive engagement among virtual exchange participants. A facilitator is a person who plays a key role in enabling engagement among virtual exchange participants. Facilitators are sometimes, but not necessarily, educators. As mentioned at the beginning of this slide, we highly recommend you review the Stevens Initiative's virtual exchange typology, which includes a glossary of terms that are helpful while reviewing the survey. Next slide, please. On this slide, we'll be sharing overviews of the three sections of the survey. Please note that we will be using a survey tool called Alchemer. You will need to create a username and password if you haven't done so already to respond to the survey. You will also be able to save your progress and continue the survey at a later time. Please respond to this survey if you are the overall coordinator or administrator of virtual exchange programs at your organization or institution, or have knowledge of most programs. While we prefer that a single person from your institution respond to the survey, we do welcome responses from individual faculty members, especially if you do not know if someone else will capture the data for your VE programs. The survey consists of three main parts. In part one, we ask about high level information about your institution or organization. Questions include the name of the institution organization, your role within your organization, whether the organization is part of any virtual exchange networks or consortia, among others. This section closes out asking about whether the organization offered at least one VE program or VE training between September 1, 2022 to August 31, 2023. If you answer yes to this question, you will move on to part two. If you answer no to this question, you will move on to part three. We will first begin by covering part two of this section. Next slide, please. In part two, we ask about more granular level information about the reported VE programs. Next slide, please. This section starts with question 11 which asks you to identify the total number of VE programs your organization offered between September 1st, 2022 to August 31st, 2023. As mentioned on the previous slide, VE programs are distinct from each other if one of the following features was unique to that program and different from others. They include participant population, learning content, countries represented, duration, and program activity types. For example, if your institution or organization offered 75 individual COIL exchanges with different participant populations, learning content, or other features during this period, you should report 75, not one. Since each program had unique features, we would consider these separate programs. Question 15 asks about types of VE activities and or style of communication. When responding to this question, please keep in mind that asynchronous refers to the programs in which participants share information and engage at different times, whereas synchronous refers to the programs in which the engagement is in real time. Other questions include program administration types, activity types, training, age, educational groups, and more. Within part two, there is a subsection that captures data about the participants of your VE programs. Questions include total number of participants, facilitators, number of hours spent per week on VE programming, participant geographical location, and others. In this year's survey, we have also included a few additional questions that cover how the survey is being used or not being used at your institution or, inst or organization and how one might be advocating for VE. After completing part two of the survey, we recommend that you review your responses before fully submitting. Next slide, please. 
If in part one, you answer that you did not offer VE programs or VE trainings between September 1, 2022 to August 31, 2023, you will move on to part three. In part three, we ask a couple of questions related to why your organization did not offer VE programs or training and whether or not you plan to do so within the next 12 months of your submission. Next slide, please. On this slide, we will be covering a few key dates and next steps. The survey launches on Wednesday, July 12, and will close on September 26, 2023 at 5 p.m. in your local time zone. We encourage you to review the FAQ sheet prior to beginning the survey, which will answer other important questions you may have. We also want your help. If you know of others who are implementing virtual exchange programs, please share with them the survey link and this recording. We hope that the report that is published later this year offers a better understanding of the field of VE from around the world. These resources will be available on the survey landing page. And as a token of our appreciation, the Stevens Initiative will showcase your work on their platforms. All respondents will receive a copy of the survey report that will be released in winter 2024. We will select a few programs that submit valid responses to be highlighted within the public report or within a public webinar to discuss the survey findings in January 2024. Finally, we will acknowledge and list all participating and eligible virtual exchange providers on the initiative's website with a link to include in your promotional efforts. In 2021, the Stevens Initiative website was viewed over 140,000 times and their outreach list had 10,000 subscribers. Thank you for watching this recording and your willingness to participate in this effort. And any questions you may have may be directed at stevensinitiative.survey at gmail.com. Thank you for watching.